Morgan Stanley reporting fourth quarter results a little earlier this week. The firm topped revenue expectations with help from its investment banking business, but profit was hit by more than half a billion dollars in charges that the bank took. Some of this was for replenishing the FDIC, that we, same thing we saw at many of the other banks. But joining us right now with his first interview since taking the top job at Morgan Stanley is the new CEO, Ted Pick. And Ted, uh, welcome. It's a thrill to be here on my uh, bucket list to be on Swalk Box, and here I am. Wow. Thanks is, for having wow. me. Wow. Thanks for having me. Better than that Jerry Seinfeld list. You remember what? <laughs> oh, it starts with a different letter. Yeah, it yes. with the love it list. Yeah. The yeah. love it list. And we do have some CEOs. That, list. Yeah, some CEOs that we ask to come on and they go, no. Love it. So it's the love it list. Yeah. So it's nice to see you. Yeah, it is good to Thanks see you. Me, we guys. hope it's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Yes. I hope so too. Yeah. Uh, Ted, let's talk. We'll talk about earnings in just a moment, but let's talk a little bit about. Your vision for the firm. Um, you've been at the firm a long time. Uh, since before 2008, you were there when the firm had its, its existential crisis. You've seen everything and were there for rebuilding it with wealth management as part of this. But what are your goals? Are there things people should look to that are going to be different than the era of James Gorman? Well, I am a, I'm a lifer. I got uh, hired out of college. I went to business school. I came back. So it's the only job I ever had. So I'm really grateful. They've kept me. You know, 31 years. And uh, we've seen a lot. You know, as you guys remember, we traded uh, $6.71 in 2008. So it's been a long road back. 14 years of Mr. Gorman putting it back together, transforming the firm, but also keeping what was good. And sort of transformation, but also reclamation of the good Morgan Stanley. And so number one for me is uh, don't, don't change the strategy. It's working. You know, we talk about the elevator speech. You go up a couple floors, and you already have it explained. We have a wealth and asset manager, and we have a global investment bank. That's what we got. And we'll get the ecosystem working together, and uh, I'm real bullish about it. So number one is reiterating that the strategy's in place. Number two, talk about the culture, the culture that got us through the crisis, that got us through the transformation. Now we get some competitors that are firing on all cylinders. So make sure that we mobilize around the firm. We're getting along real well. Keep going on that. And then the last piece is to hit our financial targets. Uh, Ten trillion of wealth and asset management uh, dollars. That's going to be coming. It's a big number. We're going to get there and hitting 20 percent returns. That's it. Ten and 20. So uh, it'll take some time, but I'm 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 super bullish. The, the stock traded off on on earnings. I think by about four percent. And from what I've seen and heard, it, it looks like there were some concerns around the margins at the wealth management business. Uh, which, again, wealth management business, huge deal. It's why the stock has done so well for so long and a lot of optimism around that. But I, I think the margins aren't what Wall Street was ho was hoping for. And it, and it doesn't look like they'll get to the 30 percent goal that you had set for, for some time yet. You want to talk a little bit about where where you are in that in that sort of movement? Yeah, that was definitely the key item. You know, uh, as you guys know, James took 14 years to put this thing together and he built a ton of credibility. And I've tried to do that with my colleagues in the business units when we turn around equities after financial crisis and fixed income. I f sort of felt like personal credibility, really important right out of the box. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, as you guys talk about all the time, we have this weird moment of cycle transition where people are loaded up in T-bills and money markets and there's no new issue activity. So actually kind of the velocity of the wealth management business right now is pretty quiet and still a little, you know, sort of reaction function from March. We're going to get to 30. I just feel like with all the investing that we're doing on the run and given we're in the cycle, kind of just guide people to the mid-20s for a while and know that we're getting to 30. It's, it's happening. Uh, the, the winners in our name, as you guys know, have been people who have owned the stock for 5, 10, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. And there are going to be some folks that react off of the way I said. I also took off like plus the signs and minus signs, but kind of laid out what we've just got to hit. $10 trillion, a 30% margins in wealth. 30% margins for the firm, right, including the investment bank, and then 20% returns on tangible. We did it during COVID, but COVID, as you guys know, was kind of a weird period where everything kind of worked. And so I want to get there durably. The, part of the reason the, the boss uh, uh, had so much success is he, he kind of guided the place to kind of a durable, durable narrative, so sort of the herky-jerky, unpredictable Morgan Stanley. Yeah. And so by the mid-20s, I know some people are a little, little disappointed. Maybe I should say mid to high, but like mid-20s feels right. We hit those levels. Uh, we'll start to exceed that as the cycle it, transitions and move forward. We, we've had, uh, we, we used to have Jim on and, and, and James, and, and actually in the middle of some of Goldman's problems, I, I, I would sometimes ask him if he was, I wouldn't say it would be schadenfreude, but I, I wonder if 
during those years, it's not a zero-sum game, but did Morgan Stanley take advantage of some of the problems that, uh, that Goldman had? And, and David was on yeah. r- earlier this week, and we said, congratulations, great quarter, first, first really good quarter in, in maybe a while. David and it looks, Solomon of Goldman. Yeah, David Solomon. It looks like yeah. it's turning around for yeah. Goldman. Does, is that a negative for Morgan Stanley? You want everyone to do well? Yeah. It was, was there, did you take advantage of any weakness at, at Goldman over the years? Do you think that the James? I mean, truly, we, we needed to find a way to get focused ourselves. I know some folks in the marketplace made a big thing about whether our market cap got bigger or not. I mean, the big story for us was, for a number of years coming out of the financial crisis, are we going to make it? Like, are we going to make it? But then you the, really the rest made of the book. It. I know, but yeah, it took but, a long time. Yeah, but the wealth business wasn't Goldman's business. Right. They weren't even trying to be in that business, But remember really. when we'd asked James about, you know, and he would never take, admit that he was taking any satisfaction. But he did take pride, I think, in, in putting Morgan in. But I got to tell you, you know, uh, David and John are, and, and I, and I uh, they are excellent competitors. They are darn good at it. And the beauty of the business we're in is sure there are boutiques and there are multi-strat hedge funds that kind of pick away at what we do but to be a world asset manager a leading wealth platform there are only three or four in the world and one of them is not even public mm-hmm. and to be a global investment bank where you're here but then you're in hong kong next week or in tokyo the only three or four of those and goldman will be one of those global investment banks we're going to be one of them too so they're an excellent competitor and the beauty of it is i think we're right way to the cycle now all of us for wealth and for the investment bank, so I like our ability to push forward and print tickets.